Pauses for Advent. Epiphany. Today is titled John the Baptist, and our scripture reading is Matthew 3, verses 1 through 12. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole reign of Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not think that you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes the one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Again, Matthew 3, verse 11. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Even though our first impressions of John the Baptist are a bit scary, I find him to be a bit intriguing. Dressed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, John the Baptist eats locusts and wild honey. He wanders in lonely desert places and preaches uncompromising messages about the laying of an axe at the root of the tree. He even calls his audience a brood of snakes. He plunges people into the Jordan River as a sign of their repentance, but behind his austere garb, rigorous diet, harsh locale, and radical message, we see his self-effacing humility, making him the divinely chosen prophet through whom the Messiah is revealed. How do we practice this kind of humility so that Jesus' presence may shine through our lives? As soon as we think we are making progress on the path toward humility, we become self-righteous and proud. We start to think that those around us are not quite as humble as they should be. We compare ourselves to others and think that we are more humble than they are. And before we realize it, we find ourselves in a place far removed from where we set out to be. So what can we learn from John the Baptist about genuine humility? First, John speaks unashamedly and without pretense about the one who would be coming after him. He possesses a clear sense of his secondary role in God's salvation story. He knows he has a voice, but he is not the word. His actions present us with a challenge. At an early age, we learn to carry ourselves in certain ways in order to get what we want. We manipulate the truth about ourselves in order to look more important than we really are. We give the impression that we are essential in certain situations, even when we aren't. We step into the path of genuine humility when we give up these attempts at pretending and show our true selves. Second, John seeks to serve those around him. He does so through the message he preaches and the baptisms he performs. 
Humility grows in our lives as we discipline ourselves to serve others quietly and without expecting fanfare. Opportunities to act with humility present themselves every day. We can offer a ride on a rainy day to a colleague who usually walks. We can take an interest in someone who cannot enhance our reputation. We can take the garbage out without being asked. Small acts of service like these can go a long way in training our habits so that we no longer act out of self-importance and pride. Third, and most importantly, John consists, consistently points others toward the Messiah and away from himself. John informs his followers that he can only baptize with water, but Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. John does not seek to grab the limelight. He willingly puts himself second so that Jesus can come first. And this is not always easy for us. We want to be known, to be recognized, to feel important. When we take center stage, either in our own lives or in the lives of others, Jesus' light grows dim, and our lives fail to reveal him to those around us. Epiphany invites us to get to know John the Baptist, as we allow him to mentor us along the path towards genuine humility. Jesus' light will begin to shine more brightly through us and into the world. Daily practice. Experiment with John the Baptist's rep, rep, excuse me, recipe for humility. For 24 hours, seek authenticity by avoiding pretense and eschewing the limelight. At the end of your experiment, reflect on your experiences and ask God for guidance. Thank you for joining me for Pauses for Advent by Trevor Hudson. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for all of the words that you have so lovingly provided us throughout the duration of this study. Thank you for inviting us into daily practices that have helped us to sit and reflect on the way that you move in our lives and help us to see ways that we can move better in the lives of others. I pray, God, that today as we sit on the day of Epiphany, we get to know perhaps areas where we choose to sit in the limelight, but instead we could choose humility. Help us, God, to understand that being humble does not mean that we have to self-sacrifice, but it means that we choose to come second and allow Jesus to always be first. I praise you, Lord, for all that you are, for every breath that you lovingly provide us. And I pray, friends, that if you know it, you join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And amen.